Let us begin. My name is Darren Joseph, HDLR Tax. We're a team of cross-border tax advisors that seek to demystify the sometimes confusing world of international tax for those of us who are trying to live that international lifestyle. Today, we have the honor and the privilege of speaking to the one, the only, Mr. William Fung. Bill, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, again, my name is William Funk. I'm a, uh, uh, a tax attorney, you know, member of the uh, uh, firm Norris and Glocklin, uh, and uh, I do. Uh, I have a you know, fairly broad tax practice, which covers such things as uh, cross-border you know, tax planning for you know, corporate transactions, as well as uh, you know, partnerships, personal matters, uh, state and local, and I also deal with civil tax controversy so it's a fairly broad uh a fairly broad tax practice can you talk to us a bit about the options you know like streamline offshore disclosure so if it is that uh, you you did not uh, disclose everything what what are your options uh, the, the options are going to depend highly on why the, uh, uh, the, the failure of compliance did not take place and so mm -hmm, i've mm -hmm. mentioned uh, that if, if that's, is that one of the things I'm, I've, I've mentioned uh these difficult circumstances where uh you know that uh you know, you know people did have some sort of notice of it, like well, and you know, that they sort of blew off the questions, uh, decide not to answer the question truthfully, because in, in much the, again, you know, sort of much the same way you might well brush off somebody, uh, you know, who's you know, asking you questions where you feel like, well, they shouldn't be asking me anything, except mm -hmm. that you know that this is something that the IRS very much has business asking that they're statutorily required to ask about this, uh, mm -hmm. and so you know, first for you know, that for those sets of failures, uh, that you have the most difficult. Uh, you know, kind of disclosure, which is what's called voluntary disclosure practice, and mm -hmm. that's not Avdi. Avdi doesn't exist anymore. There used to be something called the Offshore Voluntary uh, Disclosure Initiative or Disclosure Program, uh, but that has gone away. And basically, what you're left with now is for you know, for cases involving failures that can't be said to be non willful uh essentially disclosure to the IRS criminal investigation division and then negotiating with them about uh you know just how bad the penalties are and uh you know, that uh uh and where that you should expect to you know uh, to have uh some kinds of penalties involved you know, you know for that uh you know, you know, that I, you know, I can't say that uh, I've you know you know gone sufficiently sort of far through those programs where I can say exactly what the what the criminal investigation you know does uh if you know, that there's some things that I've uh, had the uh chance to initiate recently but that's you know, there at the beginning uh the better options are the various Sort of delinquent information return, delinquent mm -hmm. FBAR, uh, you know, filing, you know, so, you know, re you know uh, return streamlined. Uh, mm -hmm. again, these all have in common is that there's either a very good reason or at least a non willful reason. So, uh, the highest, uh, you know, the, you know, best case scenario is reasonable cause, uh, which is, you know, that where that, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, you, that you can show that is that somebody other than you messed up and sometimes it really does happen and uh, uh and i have had uh, cpas uh actually you know, draft affidavits when they can truthfully say that uh you know that they either you know failed to ask or that they were told and uh, uh they simply just you know didn't prepare you know these returns didn't prepare them timely uh you know that there's a you know change in staff and so that things slip through the cracks uh things like that you know happen and that these are cases of, of reasonable cause uh um, you know, uh, and you know, and uh, 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 they're also it's in uh, and in, in you know in that case uh, you know that unfor you know, unfortunately sort of the you know some of the easy programs have been uh, taken away so uh, it, it will require uh, you know, uh, you know some kind of correspondence to the IRS ideally a cover letter with the return. I have to tell you that I've seen that the IRS regularly ignore the cover letters. And so very often with some of these you know, cases that have reasonable cause, that there are these frontline people who uh, are an automatic pilot and who sort of you know, deny that they, regardless of uh, what somebody wrote in the cover letter, <laughs> that they say, this doesn't establish reasonable cause, you have to go to appeals. And so that you can very well serve this, is, you know, that, you know, that having the cover letter, uh, you know, that uh, I, I wasn't able to follow returns on time because I was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was held captive in a uh, Russian POW camp and I had my arm chopped off. And uh, sorry, this doesn't establish reasonable cause. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, you know, they, they has to go to an appeals officer before that, mm -hmm. that gets reviewed. Uh, you know, that, 
the streamlined is that, you know, you know is paradoxically uh, you know easier even though that uh you know involves uh sort of a, a you know you know, uh, you know, not as good a, re a reason, but usually some sort of non willful reason, like and which is that mm -hmm. I wasn't aware, and and it does involve yeah. you know, where that nobody has brought this to your attention. You're filing yeah. returns on your own, mm -hmm. uh, you know, th you know that uh, you know, you know, but you know, basically they can show that you messed up. You know, not that you know, mm -hmm. not that somebody else caused you to mess up, but you know that, that you messed up, and that mm -hmm. you really had no intention to you know to mess up. Uh, you know, then you can go through streamlined, and if that you're uh, uh, and non-US residents and you know, have sufficient non-US residency and you have that, uh, then you can go through and uh, you know and come away with no penalties. Uh there is a what's called a miscellaneous penalty that might be five percent uh is calculated off of an investment base. Uh and so that that can you know that, that can be a real penalty, but that uh you know still is better than you know that voluntary disclosure practice. Uh and so that then is also a you know, favored way out. Um Again, I will caution that non-willful really does need to mean it really does need to be non-willful. And I have seen cases where that you know somebody who uh, has actually been filing these things for years and they they stop filing. And the reason they stop filing is that well, you know that they sort of sense that you know some of the financial information might have been wrong, and so like well they didn't want to file the the, the returns until that they were correct. And where I've you know sort of you know told them uh, I don't think that this passes muster is non-willful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that uh, you know that one of the you know, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I think is uh, you know, is absolutely injurious to non-willful is that if you had been complying and then not, and mm -hmm. and so uh, you know that that's a case where you know, that uh, unless they can show that somebody who's actually telling you uh, know that you know, that you know, while you had been filing, you really don't have to, and then you followed that person's advice. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, that's the only circumstance there where I think that that would pass muster. But then I think it's important to get that, you know, uh, you know to get an affidavit from, uh, uh, the practitioner who did that or to, ch you know, chase them down and, and, uh, file a complaints about them. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that, uh, non full, real, non willful really does need to mean, you know, mean non willful. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you have to be absolutely rigorous in, in applying that. And so, uh, then if you know, that, if you know, that somebody told you and you ignored it, uh, uh, that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, uh, that's not, you know, that's not, you know, that's not permitted. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, that there's a term that's referred to as willful blindness. Mm -hmm. Uh, willful blindness is not, is not equivalent, uh, to, uh, uh, to Non willful. In fact, they're treated as antonyms uh, mm -hmm. with respect to uh, U.S. enforcement. Mm -hmm. No, th those are all great points. So it is a bottom line is that this is a minefield to negotiate. And if it is, you find yourself in the unfortunate position where certain things that should have been reported, should have been disclosed, or you just haven't been filing for a while, you, you do yourself a favor to get advice. And if it is that it involves foreign financial assets, you definitely want to sit with practitioners for whom this is an area of expertise. They're familiar yeah. with foreign financial assets, they're familiar with foreign investments, foreign companies, uh, and whatever else needs to be to be properly reported. And with these various options, unfortunately, you know, a lot of it isn't again, it's not codified. There's no there's no tax code really. It's you know, it's someone who is uh experienced enough or able to reference, you know, there's some of the cases that come out like, okay, well, you know, what does willful mean? You know, what right. does not willful mean and, and making sure that you inadvertently don't open yourself up to making things worse. Because I've met someone in Indonesia, actually, who, you know, they went, you know, they, they went through the disclosure process. I, I guess they went through streamline, but unfortunately, the practitioner they use was not familiar with international asset reporting and compliance. And they, they, the practitioner, you know, they, they were just outside of their, you know, they're swimming outside of their, and they made, the situation worse and you know that that the taxpayer was, was quite distressed i've never had a, a client who's been uh, kicked out of streamlined mm -hmm. uh you know but uh, it is something that happens uh, and so you know, that, that the, so the irs mm -hmm. does look for instances when you know that mm -hmm. they feel that uh, that the streamlined is being misused yeah yeah uh, we we've, we've had it you know this particular client and the thing is that's i'm working uh, as the accounting team with his tax attorney, someone, someone like, like yourself. And we warned the client, Hey, we know your situation. We don't think you'll qualify for streamline, but he was adamant that, Hey, let's give this a shot. Let's give this a shot. And as predicted, right. we got kicked out, but you know, uh, it, it tends to be something kind of really obvious, but otherwise, you know, streamline the burden of proof. It tend relatively speaking, 
it tends to be on the lighter side, would you say? Well, I said, what I would say is that, uh, that it, it, in general, that the IRS rules of evidence, it's not like a, uh, you know, courtroom where that, you know, that, uh, you know, they have to, you know, go th you know, through certain, uh, you know, through th certain steps in order to get the evidence in, or for that matter, that, uh, then there are you know, certain things that kick out. The IRS will look at anything that's relevant. And so on the other, if that, if you, you know, present things that you know, on, you know that are you know, are facially credible uh, mm -hmm. and relevant. Uh, the IRS will, will look at it. Uh, you know, uh, but you know, that I guess that the thing I would say is that overall, that the story has to hang together, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, that this is sort of a uh, slightly uh, this may seem like a slightly woo way of uh, describing mm -hmm. things, uh, but I tend to mm -hmm. think that reality and truth sort of vibrate on their own frequency, uh, and mm -hmm. that is that the you know, things that you know, that uh, are credible have a solidity. You know, that you know, that there are facts. There's a reality. The documents tend to you know, you know, back the reality. That the story t is, is mutually reinforcing, and that when things are, you know, are inconsistent, you know, that it's like that there are all these uh, you know, loose threads, and you know, that you know, there are questions raised about why is this thing uh, true but not this thing, uh, and uh, you, know, you know, and so. Uh, you know, that it's, uh, I wouldn't say that the, you know, that the, uh, you know, that the, the burden is necessarily lighter, but I would say that there's uh, a good faith that's presumed. And mm -hmm. if the presentation of the facts seems mm -hmm. to justify the good faith, uh, mm -hmm. you know, then my experience is that the IRS, uh, simply doesn't do anything more. It's mm -hmm. sort of, you know, when that there's, that there's something that's, that's inconsistent, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that raises issues, uh, mm -hmm. that the, 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 you know, that, uh, that the IRS does ask more, and so uh, th that there's somehow that the IRS you know, is able to uh, you know, engage in some discernment you know, that if you know, if that, you know, if if my things are going through, but there are streamlines that are being rejected, or at least they're being inquired into, mm -hmm. somehow the IRS is making these determinations. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals. We can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.